Hi, it's Nell, and today I am going to be talking about a plant I love, but don't I say that a lot? The Hoya. And I was going to do Hoya care indoors and outdoors, but I decided to break it into two, so it wasn't so confusing. So this is all about growing the fabulous Hoya as a houseplant. Now there are three things, maybe four, that are really true of this plant. I've been growing Hoyas for a very long time. They are easy, they are durable, they are long-lived, and they are attractive. So it's a great one to have as a houseplant. So this is the same as the other houseplant videos I've done. In the recent past, I'm just gonna cover what I think are the important things here. The rest of the care points will be in the blog post, plus things will be explained much more in there. The link will be down below and also on our website, joycegarden.com. And I have done quite a few posts and videos on Hoyas, so I will leave some of the links down below and you can find them on our blog. So as a house plant, this plant is generally used as either a tabletop now, tabletop is a broad term. It means it's either obviously on a table, it can be on a credenza, on a, on a bookshelf, on a buffet. That is what a tabletop plant is. And also a hanging plant. Now I have a Hoya outdoors, which you might have seen. I grow that as a topiary. Sometimes you see that indoors, but generally a tabletop plant and a hanging plant. And as for size, you generally see them in a six inch pot. This plant, um, like a floor plant, is generally sold by height, also pot size too. These are sold by pot size. So most commonly you find them in a four inch, six inch, eight inch, and 10 inch pots. Usually it's a hanging pot. And the wonderful thing about Hoyas is there's not just one Hoya. There are many species and then varieties of Hoyas. This right here, which actually does grow as a house plant, is Hoya obovada. But there are all different um, sizes of leaves, shapes of leaves, variegations, um, textures. Some leaves are big like this, some are small, some are like the Hindu rope has a really crinkled leaf. So you can find them in a really, really wide variety of different, um, I guess, appearances, you would say. So I'm sure you can find something to suit your liking. And in terms of growth rate, I find them to grow slow to moderate. My Hoya obovada grows slower than my Hoya carnosa variegata, my variegated Hoya, but again, that grows outdoors. So you'll find a little bit of variance in growth depending on the Hoya, but in general, depending on the light you have it into, I would say moderate or low to moderate growth rate. And in terms of exposure indoors, they like good natural light, which is sort of hard to explain. Um, mine is in a corner. This, there's a sliding glass door behind me and it's on a table right by the sliding glass door. This is a north exposure. And then there's a very tall, narrow window, which is an east exposure, so it gets those two. Um, exposures, but you have to remember again too, I'm in Tucson, Arizona, which gets a lot of sun. So it is bright here a lot. And that is sort of the sweet spot for Hoyas. You want to give them that good natural light, but you don't want them in low light, low to no light, or you don't want them in hot direct sun. They just like that good, good, good good, good bright light. And in terms of species and varieties, you'll get a little bit of variance from 
species to species in terms of what the leaf color is or, or, the, or the variegation. Some will take a bit lower light than others will. But just remember, no low light. Zoom in so you can see the uh, beautiful foliage on this Hoya. And uh, now we're going into watering. And Hoyas have thick, fleshy leaves and the, their stems are really thick also. Now they are not succulents, but they are considered succulent-like plants. So that's why you want to water them only when dry. I tend to underwater mine more than overwater it for sure. Um, many of the Hoyas are epiphytic, like the orchids and the bromeliads, so they do not like to have their roots stay wet and damp at all. So water only when dry. And as evidenced by the fact that my Hoyas are doing so well in the desert, here in the Arizona desert, they can uh, handle the dry air in our homes very well. And in terms of fertilizing, um, I don't fertilize mine. I do the worm compost and compost dealio in the spring, which I finally did a post on. So I will leave that down below. Oh, and I just filmed a video on that too, finally. So um, that is done, but I'm going to start to do it in the summer too, because the plants grow so fast here. But you could use a balanced liquid houseplant fertilizer, preferably organic, something like 555-888, and uh, feed it, feed your Hoyas in the spring, and if you think it needs it again, in the summer also. Now this is my variegated Hoya, which grows outside, but I just want to um, focus on this for the next point, just so you can see how different this one is than the obovata. Uh, so now we're going to talk about soil, and I found that they like this soil blend. This is what I use. I use a succulent cactus mix, potting soil, orchid bark, and cococoa. That's what I found to be their sweet spot. I will leave the approximate proportions I use. Oh, actually I did a video and a post on repotting this plant. So I talked a lot about the soil in there. So you can read about it in there. But if you don't want to buy a lot of things, uh, what I would recommend as a house plant to do, to use a good organic potting soil, half that, and then do half orchid bark. Because you can buy a small uh, bag of orchid bark and it's not that expensive at all. So for the next point, I'm going to a focus on, on the prop who, who happens to be outside. This is Riley Cat, and I'm going to be talking about are Hoyas toxic to pets? And no, they are not, I am happy to report. So you can have uh, your Hoyas and your pets, and everybody will be just fine. However, if a pet chews on any leaf, it could make them sick. So just be warned of that, but it's not going to be toxic. And another plant that is non-toxic to pets just happens to be right here, and that is the ponytail palm, which mine is getting really tall, wow. <laughs> anyway, that's another safe one. Now on to pests, and I wanna talk about pests because this one, this Hoyas are prone to mealy bugs indoors because they grow pretty thick and they can get into the, into the joints of the plants. And it's, um, it's, it is common for a Hoya to get mealy bug, mealy bugs indoors. So I've done a whole post on that. So I'm going to link that. So just keep your eyes open for mealy bugs. It looks like hunks of cotton, specks of cotton here and there. And they also like to hang out under the leaves, under, under the leaves and in the nodes here. Outdoors, which is a different story. Every spring, my Hoya gets orange aphids on that tender, nice, juicy, 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 
<laughs> juicy new growth. But indoors, I found they're more prone to mealybugs. Hoyas are so easy and so tough, there's not too much else to report, but there will be other points in the blog post, so be sure and check that out. And oh yes, they do flower. Uh, mine flowers more readily outdoors than indoors, and the different Hoyas have different, different color flowers. And yes, the, they are wax flowers. They have a, have a, have a waxy, um, waxy coating to them and they're quite beautiful and they are long lasting and just really wonderful to have on the plant. I love it when my Hoyas bloom. Oh, and I'm going to re be repotting this Hoya in the spring, my Oobavada. Um, so stick around for that. Yes, it's, it's stick around until spring. So, so be sure to keep your eye open for that because oftentimes the growers use a straight potting mix all the way across the board for all house plants. And I want to put this into that special blend. And I also need to put it into a bigger pot because it is in a six inch pot. And Hoyas don't mind being pot bound, but this one really needs new soil and it does need a little bigger pot. So I'm going to be repotting a bunch of my house plants in spring. So you'll be seeing that. That was such an easy video to film because Hoyas are so easy. So I hope you have found this video about growing Hoyas as house plants, growing and caring for Hoyas as house plants to be helpful. I have a lot more videos coming your way. Actually, next week is growing Hoyas outdoors. I grow mine outdoors in here in Tucson, and I also grew them outdoors in Santa Barbara. And let's get into our indoor gardens and make our worlds a more beautiful place. I thank you for all your likes and your subscribes, and I also thank you so much for watching. And here is my other, uh, other kitty cat, Oscar, the old man. <laughs> and I will catch you in the next video.